Hey everyone, this is my video for my project of substance abuse and prevention. In this video, I'm gonna cover um, healthy ways that we can cope with work stress, um, ways that we can release it. Um, we're gonna identify some signs that someone is uh, dependent on a substance and we're gonna go over some of the most commonly abused substances and we're gonna learn about ways that these people can get help um, and get into recovery. So first off, we're gonna discuss um, the people that are most at risk of substance abuse, and that really is anyone, because anything can happen to anyone and we can all get put in positions in life that we just feel like it's too much and that we can't handle it. However, there are instances uh, that put people more stress, for example, if someone loses a family member, they lose a friend to death or disease, they can feel a huge amount of grief and loss and they may turn to substances to help numb that pain. Another uh, risk factor is someone that's super, you know, overworked at work, they have a lot of work stress going on, a lot of family stress going on, and they just feel like they aren't either able to keep up with it or they're just not enough. They can also turn to substance abuse. Another uh, key factor is if someone was injured and they feel like they can no longer um, participate in the daily activities that they used to because of the pain or the injury. This can also lead to them being dependent on substances. So now we're going to talk about some key factors, uh, how to tell someone may be using and abusing and relying on these substances uh, to get through every day. And that's going to be a key factor. If someone can't get through a single day without using the substance and relying on it, that can indicate that it is in fact being abused. So for example, if someone has all of a sudden became uh, isolated from everyone else and they're just not acting like their self, uh, they might act, they have a complete change in mood. If you notice that, you know your friends really well that you talk to every day. If you just notice all of a sudden they don't want to talk to you anymore, or they're just really just kind of going off to their self, that can be a key indicator. If they also have like the physical signs that something is wrong, like bloodshot eyes, um, they're super groggy or super jittery, or they're not able to keep up with their daily uh, work hours. Like for example, they're calling off work because they're drunk and hungover. They're not working their regular work week because they can't make it to work or even uh, events like depression that can lead to someone turning to substances really not any one person is at more risk than another. Uh, definitely life events put people at risk, but really everyone can use and abuse substances. Uh, another thing we're going to talk about healthy coping mechanisms. So especially being in the nursing field, we are bombarded with stress all the time. We have to take care of patients. Sometimes we have more patients than we think we can handle. This puts nurses at risk. We also um, are, are giving out medications. We also have the key to uh, narcotics and that could put us at risk. Um, a lot of nurses at times, if they feel that they you know, just can't make it through the day, that um, you know, their assignment is too stressful, they may turn to um, the drugs. And it also makes it a little bit easier because they have them right in front of them, which puts them a little bit, you know, at a higher risk at times than others, because if it's right in front of you, you may be inclined to take it or try it. Um, an another thing is, um, you know, if you're under a lot of stress in any other career fields that you may feel like, you know, you can't handle it anymore and you might turn, you know, after work, if you notice someone is uh, continuously going out to the bar and every single day they need to. Now I'm not talking about, you know, occasional drink with friends or, you know, every now and again, I'm talking about if they can't, every time they leave work, they have to go get that drink. That's an indicator that there may be addiction. Now, as far as like I said, with the healthy coping mechanisms, everyone goes through stress. And so we need to find outlets that we can release that stress whether it be uh, working out, say going for a jog, going for a night walk, just to clear your head, um, meditation. Some people like to do things like yoga. 
Um, even like hobbies, uh, people like to bowl, go to the golf course, horseback riding, anything that really gets their mind off of everything that's going on and um, that they're able to just decompress and relax and have a good time are healthy coping mechanisms. Um, and another topic I'm going to cover is substances that are abused, which I talked a little bit about earlier in this video, but like I said, a big one is um, alcohol. Another one, of course, is drugs. So these are um, like your painkillers. So you're like oxycodone, your per Percocets, um, morphine, or even those um, depress depressants like Ativan that people can use and abuse just to try to relax themselves, especially if they just feel like everything is becoming too much. So these are some substances that can be used and abused and are more likely to be used and abused than others. Like I said, especially the controlled drugs and nurses are at a high risk because they are around these drugs all the time. But like I said, other career fields are definitely at risk as well. Now, I also want to cover how someone can get help. So first off, uh, to be able to get help, the person it's really gonna be about them. They have to want to get well they have to want to be able to thrive so once they can make that decision that they do want to change their life they do want to get clean they can go to detox facilities where they actually are walked through a program with trained instructors and healthcare providers that are there for them the whole time there's also groups and community meetings that uh, people can go to, like AA meetings, um, meetings for people that have used drugs to cope. And this also helps them because it builds a strong, um, in their community, that people are able to get involved with others and people can use each other for encouragement and um, progress together. So really the main key is um, to learn healthy coping mechanisms, to learn uh, what your outlets are, and to make sure that those outlets are, are healthy outlets. And to also watch for signs um, in your career field as you're working, especially as a nurse. Um, if you notice uh, when a certain nurse works and that th those patients are, seem to complain that they're more in pain, um, that could be a big indicator that the medications aren't getting, uh, aren't being given to the patients. Um, another key factor, which would be super huge, would be the narcotic count is off. Um, things are going missing. Things don't add up. Uh, maybe the narcotic book and the um, information in the computer isn't being logged correctly or the information, for example, like in a machine such as a Pixis. These are all key indicators and especially as nurses, we should always have our eyes out and um, look out for the community, look out for others and look out for our coworkers. I hope you all have a great day.